guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking all about my July wrap up. I had a very, very, very ambitious July TBR. Check out that video right here if you'd like to see what I was trying to read in the month of July. Sadly, I did not hit that goal. I barely finished seven books, but I was so proud of what I read since I struggled reading. I had a really, really hard time reading the entire month. I was just in like this slump and then July was just really crazy busy and um, big news, I bought a car, I had a birthday, my brother had a birthday. Just a whole lot of things happened in July and reading wasn't really my top priority. That being said though, I did get seven books done and I enjoyed for the most part what I read. And so today I'm going to dive a little deeper into what I read in the month of July and my thoughts on books that I read. The first book that I read was actually a reread and of course I loved it because I loved it the first time and the second time and any other time that I've read it. <laughs> Short Straw Bride by Karen Whitmire. I of course rated this a 5 out of 5 stars. The story hasn't changed but somehow, some way, it still makes my heart beat a little faster. Love this book so, so much. And of course, I rated it out of the moon. And I thought going into the month, I blew this book out of the water with, in a day. And I was like, great, this month is going to be awesome. All of it lies. The next book that I read was by a debut author, a debut author. Why can't I ever say that word right? I don't know. That is The Hope of Azure Springs by Rachel Fordham and I talked about this book on my channel multiple times it's been on my blog multiple times spotlighting before it even released and I was finally able to read it in paperback and I was so so excited I rated this a four out of five stars Rachel crafted a beautiful heartbreaking but hope-filled story and there has been so many good things said about this book and I am one of those people who will sing the praises um, you can tell in a couple places that she is a debut uh, author. Just little tweaks that, of course, every author learns and perfects over time. But that does not take away from the story at all. And just get your tissues ready because it is a tearjerker in some spots. But so, so good. The next book that I read in the month of July was actually Dead Drift by Danny Petrie. I rated this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I loved it. So I'm always saying that I do not read series out of order. I hate doing it. I really, really do. But I did it with this one. I don't know. I just couldn't help it by the time I needed to read it for review. And I hadn't been able to get to book one through three by then. And it just kind of was stinky. Not that I really felt I was missing out on a whole lot, but I just knew that it would have been so much better had I read it in order and I think that goes without saying for any series like you can read them and you might not miss a whole lot just because most Christian fiction try to market stuff as it can stand alone but it shouldn't stand alone does that make sense it was very very good and it just gets me so excited to read book one two and three because now I can't wait and I'm hooked and yeah the next book that I read was A Daring Venture by Elizabeth Camden. This was the first book that I had read by Miss Camden and I really, really, really enjoyed her writing style. Um, that being said, I only rated it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I had a bit of a hard time. I'm not really sure what I want to say about it. The romance was really quick, which kind of threw me off. It was just kind of confusing in some parts. I liked the idea behind the story. The history was interesting. It was cool. I just, the romance and just the people and some of the characters just kind of got under my skin. So in the end, I only rated it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but I will definitely pick up other books by Elizabeth. I have a few of them because I really did enjoy her writing style and it was a fast read once I got into it, but I just had a couple hiccups along the way. Alright, so, okay, okay, the next book that I read in the month of July, I actually started at the beginning of the month. I plan to break it up, 100 pages a day, 
I would knock it out in three days. All of those lies, it took me over almost an entire month to finish this book. I really, really, really struggled and I really, really did not like the book. Um, most people probably would have DNF'd it, but it's for a review and I just, I don't know what to do or what to say. I, the book and I just didn't click, but the thing is I know that it resonates with so many other people, so it's nothing against the author. I really enjoyed her writing style. It was lyrical. It was easy and breezy and just really nice. I just didn't care for the story and how it was crafted. That book is The Solace of Water by Elizabeth Byler Yance. I rated this, I ended up rating it a 2 out of 5 stars, and that is so low for me, and it's so hard for me to rate books low, um, but I just, it was problematic for me, I had some issues with it. Uh, my full review will be up on my blog sometime soon. Still trying to pray how to do it and how to say the right things without hurting anybody's feelings, because I know that lower reviews are really rough for authors, and I admire what she put into this. I admire her heart for the people that she talked about in this book. Um, it's very diverse. It's about a, a black lady and a, the black lady's daughter and then an Amish lady and just secrets and things and it's based in the 1950s so race, racism is a huge, huge thing and I just really struggle with that. I would not have been able to last a single day in this time period at all. But it's just really hard for me to read about it since I am so, I believe so strongly about my beliefs and it was just really rough. It was good for me to get out of my comfort zone. It was good for me to read a book like this. But in all honesty, I just couldn't connect with any of the characters. I was just really, really struggling and it stinks but that's just how I felt about it but again I know that so many people love this book so it's not anything to do with the author or anything like that I think it's just time and life and experiences that I've gone through and stuff like that it just doesn't really resonate with me as a person like it would somebody else down the street the next book that I read in the month of July was Dark Water Secrets by Robin Carroll and I rated this a 3 out of 5 stars. It was okay. It was good. I really liked some aspects of it. But at the same time, again, I had some issues. It talks, because it's based in New Orleans, it's a mystery in New Orleans, which is so cool. I love New Orleans. I love the culture. It's kind of interesting. Love is a strong word for the culture. I'm intrigued by it. You know, it's just the French Quarter and everything about it is just... It's beautiful buildings. I've never been, but again, pictures, books, you get the idea. Um, but, so I was super, super excited to read this, and it starts off kind of interesting. The mystery happens. It's all kind of interesting. The writing was good, but then voodoo started integrating itself in there, and like I understand, I do get it. That is a part of the culture in New Orleans that is a part of the culture down there but it was just kind of strange to read and like continue to read about um again not in a whole bunch of depth but it was there and then on top of it the main character um was raped so it talks about that and it, when they first talk about it it doesn't really go into a whole lot of detail but as the story progresses, rape is a huge part of the book, so that is a trigger warning for anybody who has um, that that messes with. Please caution. It's in here, and it's quite a bit of the book. This is going to be a series. This is the first book in the series, and this book does not wrap up. As in the next book is going to talk about the same characters. There's a love triangle. It's just. I was really, really interested in the book. It sounded really good as one story. The fact that it's going to keep dragging on kind of dissuades me. Um, but I am excited to read the rest of the series. I do want to see where it goes, I think. <laughs> but overall, it was a good read. It was 
quick read. I read it in a night because I couldn't put it down. It was really good. It grabbed my attention, but again, I just had a couple little issues with it. And the last book that I read in the month of July was Never Envy an Earl by Regina Scott. This is book three in her Fortune Bride series, and it's pumped out one, two, and three really fast, and now she has to take a break and write the rest of them. That being said, there will be more. Um, I'm very excited for the next book because I finally get to see one of the characters who slowly wormed her little tiny self into my heart, and I'm very excited about that. Um, I rated it a four out of five stars, and it was cute. It was good. It was not my favorite. I really enjoyed book one and book two more, um, just because we saw the lead girl in book two quite a bit. I just, I don't know. This one was a lot more integrated, like it was a big thing. Like book one and two kind of overlapped, but not really. But book two and three super overlapped, and then book four is going to super overlap with book two and three. I have a feeling. So I didn't like, surprisingly, I didn't really care for all of the overlapping. Um, it was just kind of strange. I kind of wanted to leave them in their book because I really like them, the people in book two, and I just kind of wanted to leave them there. But at the same time, it's really cool to make sure that you keep everybody together because it is such a big family function kind of thing like all the friends all the dukes and the earls and the dis the viscounts and the all the people they know each other and i love that but i don't know something about this book i just felt like it was a continuance of book two and i kind of just wanted it to end a little bit and maybe that was just me getting tired of that story. I also wasn't a huge fan of some of the people in this book, sadly. I loved all of our other secondary characters in other books. Something about this book. It could have been my mindset at the same time. Again, I had struggled through the last couple books that I read. So I don't know if it was just me and my headspace because I love Regina's writing. I love her stories. I love the series. But something about the book just wasn't quite five stars for me. So I left it out of four. My full review will be on the blog soon. So like I said, I read seven books in the month of July. A couple of them I really enjoyed, and then the others were just kind of mediocre, which was kind of sad. Again, nothing gets the authors. That's just how I felt at the time, and totally could have been my head space, but I don't know. Just had a couple issues with each of the books that I read. All my reviews to, I think, all of these books, except for Short Straw Bride, are either up on my blog or will be up on my blog. And you can follow that blog at fortheloveofchristianfiction.blogspot.com. And you can also follow my Instagram where I'll talk about these books more with pictures and all the things at For the Love of Christian Fiction. All my other links are in the description box below. And I think that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!